Arizona. She's got a smile that'll steal your heart. She was a, a little angel. But this four-year-old was hit, killed, and dragged by a car. Tonight, her family tells 3TV they want justice. A principal peeping Tom cuts a deal with prosecutors. And tonight, want to know how much skin damage you have? We will tell you how to get the true blue answer. Am I going to die of cancer? Tonight, Arizona. Good evening, everyone. Governor Symington goes to trial tomorrow on 22 criminal counts, including fraud, perjury, and attempted extortion. Mike Warren has this preview. We are now less than 12 hours away from Governor Symington's criminal trial. And when he comes here to the federal courthouse tomorrow morning, he will not have to face the usual barrage of reporters. He and his attorney will enter through an underground entrance, an entrance usually reserved for federal prisoners. The governor is on trial for 22 fraud counts. 20 of those counts involve falsifying financial statements to federally insured banks. There is one count of attempted extortion and one count of perjury. So what can we all expect from this trial? We'll try lots and lots and lots of paper, documents showing the governor told many different stories about his finances. And who are the players? Well, this is John Dowd. He's the lead attorney for the governor. He's from Washington, and some describe him in one word, tough. And this is David Schindler. He's the chief prosecutor from Los Angeles and known for prosecuting bank frauds and security scams. There will be no grandstanding from these two. The judge has ordered them not to speak to the media. As for the jury, well, selection begins tomorrow. And according to the governor's office, 17 jurors will be seated. They will all listen to the case. Then 12 will be randomly picked to reach a verdict. And when should that verdict come down? Well, the estimate is about three months. Topping news from CNN tonight. It was the breaking point in the Oklahoma City bombing trial. Today, Timothy McVeigh's army buddy, the prosecution's star witness, took the stand. Michael Fortier of Kingman, Arizona, told jurors he and McVeigh scoped out the federal building months before the blast. He said that was where McVeigh believed government orders to converge on Waco were given. The defense calls Fortier's testimony slanted because they say he is talking under a plea agreement. Other national news tonight, an Ohio principal is jailed tonight for peeping on his high school's cheerleaders. Investigators say Walter Conte rigged an elaborate video set up to tape them disrobing. He was apologetic, but the students say that's not enough. But I am sorry for the hurt that I may have caused you. I am sorry for the hurt that I may have caused your families. Your apology will never make up for what your actions on September 3rd, 1996 have done. This event is not only a disgrace to us, but to our families, the entire school, and the community as well. Conte will spend some time in jail. He says he plea bargained to save the girls the embarrassment of going through a lengthy trial. Police hunted her down, and tonight they're questioning the Oklahoma mother accused of leaving her daughter home alone since January. Police say 10-year-old Aston Saylor ate dog food to stay alive, but managed to go to school each day, never letting on. Investigators found this picture Aston drew. Child Protective Services is now taking care of her, but she says she loves her mother and doesn't want to be separated from her. This is Samantha Moore. It may look like special effects, but these are pictures of a twister in downtown Miami. The wind swirled, spinning debris into the air as the tornado took shape along the shoreline. It then blasted its way across Biscayne Bay, slamming into a residential island. The air currents that caused that twister also tossed some airline passengers around. Seven people aboard an American Airlines jet en route from Boston to Miami were injured by severe turbulence. Two passengers and five flight attendants were taken to the hospital. The Weather Service says that the turbulence occurred the same time the tornado touched ground. Residents in the southeast uh, don't usually start worrying about bad weather until June 1st. 
and uh, the start of the hurricane season. We'll have more on the nation's weather and uh, more on our local weather as well coming up with Samantha Moore. Well, tonight we've got the lettuce lowdown on those package prepackaged salads. Just how ready to eat are they? Three on your sides, William Lajeunesse took them to the lab. Bag salads say washed and ready to eat, but are they as clean as they claim? We tested Arizona's top selling brands, Fresh Express and Ready Pack, at Aerotech Labs in Phoenix. We have uh, five samples of lettuce that we're going to have tested. For comparison, we also bought a ready to eat garden salad from a grocery store and a head of lettuce. We're assuming that someone's processing this normally. We rinsed half the head in tap water, the other half in a bacteria-killing chlorine dilution recommended by experts. We bought our lettuce on March 25th, two days before the sell-by date stamped on the ready pack bag, and three days before for the Fresh Express salad, which looked fresh, but... Oh, jeez, that does not smell good. It definitely doesn't smell fresh. No, it doesn't. The grocery salad was one day old. Lab director Eric Bolin liquefied the samples in a blender and poured them into Petri dishes to incubate. A week later, we returned for the results. This is sample one and this is sample five. As you can see, there is no growth on that. And there's considerable amount of growth on this one. Bolin found massive amounts of bacteria on the pre-cleaned Fresh Express salad. You would have 32 million microorganisms. Per, per like gram. Per bite. <laughs> um, you would have more than that in a bite of salad. So what does it mean? Well, food safety expert Dave Ludwig says the bacteria count, while extremely high, would probably not harm a healthy adult. But the high count of coliforms, representing more potent bacteria, concerned him. We're getting half a million counts on the packaged lettuce in, in one of these reports and, and 130,000 in another. Uh, those numbers are getting fairly high. Bolin agreed. Eating high counts of bacteria may make you feel sick. Fresh Express says the high counts, quote, have no meaning and don't affect taste, health, or product quality, unquote. So let's compare their results with Ready Pack. 2.3 million bacteria per gram, about a fourth of the total coliforms. 3 million bacteria for the grocery salad, but look at the head of lettuce. Washed with just tap water, virtually immaculate with a count of 70. While the lettuce, washed according to government recommendations, had no recordable bacteria at all. We're going to buy heads of lettuce from now on. Make our salads fresh from fresh vegetables. Look at the difference. The lettuce washed in chlorine is clear. The fresh express dish is clouded with bacteria. Clearly, the reason you have these higher numbers is because human contact is an issue. Uh, you had someone else preparing this food. The solution? Ignore the label and wash your ready-to-eat salads with tap water before eating. Then use a salad spinner so your lettuce isn't soggy. Then you can eat your salad without fear that you're also eating this. Now, the longer the lettuce is on the shelf, the higher the bacteria count. So, get the freshest, coldest bags from the back of the stack. We also tested for... ...and wants butterfly kisses. If you have a daughter, and especially if you're a dad, you'll love the song Butterfly Kisses, and it's burning up the airway. Bob Carlyle wrote the song just before his daughter Brooke turned 16. His album Shades of Grace has been on the Christian charts for most of the past year. But all of a sudden, Butterfly Kisses is one of the hottest songs around. We get lots of calls from people who want to hear this, uh, you know, for their mom or dad or, uh, oh, you know, or for their little girl. Or, or they want to record it so they can play it at their wedding. That's right. All sorts of different reasons. It's so emotional. The album is being reissued tomorrow. And just what are Butterfly Kisses? Ask any kid. It's the fluttering of one's eyelashes against another person's cheek. It's true, art sparks controversy, and it's no exception in the city of Chandler, where tomorrow morning, at a cost of 12000 in taxpayer dollars, Wall with Waves will be moved. Like a monument to introspection, Wall with Waves sits at the corner of Arizona Avenue and Chandler Boulevard. 
What does it mean? And it's supposed to mean that uh, Chandler is changing, it's powerful, there's a wall, there's strong waves, and the changing movement. And it's moving to Tumbleweed Park to make room for redevelopment, and so people can dwell on it from a bench, not from the driver's seat. Put together in 1989 at a cost of $30,000, Wall with Waves is actually made up of brushed aluminum, and yes, it is hollow. But what isn't hollow is the criticism surrounding this and its move, because this is public art, and public art takes public money. City Hall has gotten phone calls and letters. We've seen very little indifference to it, but uh, it's to be expected. I think, you know, people really take, take their art to heart, <laughs> so to speak. Some think 12 grand is worth it just to get the thing out of downtown, but others say the price is too high. Why pay $12,000? Contribute it to the schools. Buy them new uniforms or something. I don't think it's, it should cost that much. I think somebody could do it cheaper. But it's a done deal. The move should take about a week. And the city of Chandler tells us on the calls they've gotten on whether to move or not, they were split about 50-50. Well, regardless of how you feel about that piece of art, you know it was hot sitting out in the sun today because, well, here we are embarking on summer again, Sam. Yes, pondering any art piece would be a little bit uh, sticky today because temperatures definitely on the uh, warm side. Almost 100 degrees didn't quite make it. But it looks like our weather pattern with all this humidity is changing finally. Let's go ahead and check those numbers out over a nice live shot this evening. 99 are high, 76 are low. Normally we're at 92 and 63. Outside right now, 88 degrees. The relative humidity, 21 percent. Winds out of the southeast at 12, still rather breezy. The barometer rising dew point at 43 degrees. Well, here's what has happened with low pressure right off the Baja Peninsula. It's brought in a lot of moisture, very similar to a monsoon pattern, but it is not officially the monsoon at all. And it looks like we will start to get some drier air on in here. You can already see that on the radar screen, a lot less active uh, tonight than it was on Saturday or Sunday night. Not much showing up right now. Earlier on, some pretty good cells, though, in the North Valley and over in the White Mountains as well. Take a look at the highs. It was warm around our state, 73 in Flagstaff, 84 in Prescott Lake, Havasu at 109. Hottest spot in the state as well as in the nation today. And in Las Vegas, 95 degrees, 68 in Denver, 66 in Kansas City, and 36 degrees up in International Falls. Rather chilly up there. There today. Snow was actually falling and throughout parts of northern Minnesota and northern Wisconsin, along with this low pressure system, and then rain, of course, along this frontal boundary. Had a stationary front over Florida today, along with a strong area of low pressure, and that's why we saw the tornado there that went right through downtown Miami today. As far as uh, what is happening then for this week, basically the cooler air well to our east, and this big ridge is going to allow us to bake in the sun. So as Patty warned us, wear all that sunscreen. Let's go ahead and take a look at the forecast. Partly cloudy tonight, 76 degrees. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, 100, 101 on Wednesday. And it looks like we'll have triple digits for the rest of this work week, Patty. Par for the course, which pretty much gets us right into sports, you know, that being a <laughs> golf phrase and everything. I Thank think, you, Sam. I think she said it's going to be hot. Yeah, did pretty you, much. Did you get that, no. too? Same song, different verse. Absolutely. You know what? My interest in the uh, NBA playoffs Ooh, has waned. Waned. Thank you. Just a little bit. I'm going to make a bumper sticker. We have waned. Yeah. <laughs> but they have it in Los Angeles and Utah. This is a basketball game that's in overtime. As I walk down the hallway to come out here, we'll give you the latest on that. And the plays of the day, this could be the play of the year. We're back because news turns to sports right now. Here's some of the interesting stuff coming up tomorrow on Good Evening Arizona. Governor Fife Symington goes on trial. 3TV brings you extensive live coverage of day one in federal court. Imagine eating anything you want and then just taking a pill to block out all the fat. Does this pill really work? We'll find out. What's up, Doc? Are fresh vegetables really better than canned? Do we have some surprising news? Plus the Beanie Baby giveaway on Good Evening Arizona from 5 to 6.30 on 3TV.